This is part two of the Killer Bundle 14 from Fanatical. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're doing the second part of the Killer 14 bundle, or the bundle, or Killer Bundle 14. Anyway, so, just like uh, before, these games, I don't play all the way through, just to get an initial impression, you know, 30 to 40 minutes, and um, just to see what I think, because I believe if you can't get my attention in 30 to 40 minutes, then to me, it's not a good game. So, let's get into it. The sixth game of this bundle the first game of this video is a game called Roller Coaster Tycoon Deluxe. So this is another blast from the past from Chris Sawyer Productions. And this is, to me, the first sim game I ever played. So this came out probably late 90s, I think 99. And I used to go to my friend's house and we used to play it on his computer all the time. And it just brought back so many of those memories. So what you're doing, just like a lot of other Sim games, you are a, I'm just going to call you a owner. And you're trying to make the best theme park that you can. And you do that by having different types of rides. You, st you have bathrooms you can charge for. You have food. You have a, a lot of different attractions that you can have in your park and, and do things. And you get feedback from people. They'll tell you things like, hey, your rides are too cheap. They're too expensive or things like that. What me and my friends used to like to do, we used to like to build roller coasters. And our goal was to try to make as many people sick as possible, as many turns and dips. And we wanted people to be just, oh, I hate to hate going on the ride. But that does affect if people like coming to your park or not, if they feel safe, if they feel if it's fun or if it's not, if it's too expensive, you know, they, they, they won't come. Nobody just think about it in real life. Who wants to go to some place where it's not fun, it's not safe and it's too expensive? Nobody. Nobody does. And you're trying to just create the best experience you can for your customer. As far as nostalgia, it, it hits all cylinders on this one. This was really my favorite in the Chris Sawyer games. They came out with it. It seems like Roller Coaster Tycoon has been coming out with different reiterations almost on a yearly basis. I think we're up to like, um, I think the Switch has a Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, version. So it, it, it's a game that stuck with us because, I mean, who doesn't want to have a theme park? I mean, look at Dollywood or Disney World. Well, you know, Dolly, shout out to her, gang gang. Who doesn't want to have a place you can go to and have people have fun, eat great food, and get paid to do it? Seems like a, a, a dream to me. On Steam, this game got a 9 out of 10. The cost is $5.99, and I think I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. It's not a perfect game. It's another one of those isometric games, and I've just never been crazy about isometric. It's just have it 2D uh, or not. And, you know, isometric just isn't my style of game. But the nostalgia factor, whew. The nostalgia factor. The next game. The next game is a game called Talisman Origins. This game is based on a 1983 board game. And I've always heard about this game, but my issue with board games is I don't have a lot of friends. And oh no, shocker, he doesn't have a lot of friends. Well, we knew that. And all board games, I don't say most school board games, all board games you need other people to play. I just never really find anybody to play so what's so great about this game it takes that multiplayer board game experience and brings it down to be as fun for one player so just like a lot of those 80s board games you have a it's a fantasy rpg game you roll a die or dice depends on what action it is to determine the outcome of the game right so you roll the die to move and then you'll get on a card it says hey roll two dice if it equals this blah 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 it, it, it's just it, it's it's one of those 
uh, D and D Dungeons and Dragons, if you don't know, types of games and stuff. You don't have to have a dungeon master or anything like that. And you go through different campaigns. They have a warrior campaign, an assassin campaign, a, a, a wraith campaign, I believe. And you just play these different scenarios and. and the way that they did this, it, it's, it's fantastic. And like, this is my type of game. I can play it by myself. If you're not into long drawn out dice games, very, I call them, they're, they're very nerdy. Um, this is a very, if, if you're not into, if you need action or you need a puzzle, um, this isn't it. But it's definitely a strategy game. I didn't go through the initial, I didn't went to, through like the quick tutorial, but games like this, I like to get in and learn. So I died so many times in the beginning of this game. It wasn't even funny. Like kept dying, kept dying until I learned the game. And once I learned the game, it became so fun. I, I, this is one of the games that are, that's going in my rotation of games that I play. And it's very rare that games from bundles that I do get into that category. And this is one of them. It's one of the games where that first person experience is very enjoyable, even though the original game, you needed more than one person to have the game to even function. Cause who, who plays a board game by themselves? That's, that's gotta be born. Somebody just playing Monopoly, gets out their Monopoly and just plays it by themselves. It's, it has to be um, a lonely, endeavor on steam this game got a 9 out of 10 the cost is 6.99 and i'm giving it a 5 out of 5 I, I, I like the game a whole lot the next game <laughs> the next game is a game called table manners table manners is a very unique game if you ever play surgeon simulator or human fall flat it's a very similar game to both of those being a physics-based game, which physics-based physics games are very uh, unique, okay? So you start in this room and you're on this app called Blunder. I guess it's a play on Tinder or Grinder or something like that. And you go through and you're trying to figure out um, who you like. So you go and select somebody and you go on a date with them and you are <laughs> you're the person who is i guess controlling the date so you have to perform actions to make them like you and want to go on a date with you again so you'll do things like uh pick up a bottle of wine and try to put it in a glass or salt their fries and just trying to control that arm it's very difficult uh it's not an easy thing to do to pick up a ketchup bottle and pour it on a steak or or light a candle, something, because I, I caught the table on fire one time. It, it's a very <laughs> um weird game. This is what it is. And you go through different dates and it gets harder and harder, the things and the tasks that you need to do to keep the person happy. Even there's a <clears throat> task where you have to feed them. And I just kind of just picked the food and smashed it in their face. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not an easy uh, game to control. Fun, but it's not easy. I think this is a game where it's just mindless fun. It's nothing to take serious. It's a game where I can see that if you didn't have, if you had some time that you wanted to waste and just have some goofy fun, this is a game that uh, you can definitely do that on. It seems unrealistic these people get upset with you because you can't pour uh, salt. I'm like, what is wrong with your arms? Why are you on a date where I have to cut up your food and feed you? Or um, I have to light the candle or I have to salt your fries. Or what is wrong with you? So on Steam, this game got a six out of 10. The cost is $17.99, and uh, I think I'm gonna give it a three and a half. It's not a bad game. It, it's definitely a time sink if you don't have, if you just want some mindless fun. The last game of this bundle and the last game of this series is a game called Autonauts. 
Autonauts is a game where you start off as this um, alien race, the best way I can describe it, and you're going to go through and colonize different planets, which it sounds like it would be some type of horror game, but it's not. You start off as a uh, crafting, which is fine, and then like every other crafting game, it's a very slow start, which I expect. That's fine. So you go and gather resources and you start building. So the first couple things you build are basic hand tools like a axe or a shovel. And then you start like, OK, well, you can start building a robot. Oh, that's cool. I can build a robot out of wood. That's fun. So you go, you build a robot and then it says, hey, you got to get in there and you got to show the robot what to do. Oh, OK, cool, cool, cool. So it walks you through that process and then you realize that not only is this a crafting game, this is a programming game. So you can program the robots to do whatever you want them to do. And one of the first things you do is make like a forestry industry. Let me tell you a story. Let me, when I was in community college, I was pursuing my cybersecurity degree. And one of the classes you had to take was web development, right? And it was based on HTML5 and CSS. I ended up getting an A out of that class. My professor pulled me to the side and be like, hey, would you like to know why you got an A in this class? And I was like, uh, sure. She was like, everything you ever made halfway worked. It didn't work. You would click on it and it was broken. The two things that you did that I think you deserved, you got an A. You tried your best and you always showed up. You did everything I have asked you to do. You did all the extra credit. You went above and beyond trying to do it. But as far as programming, you're not good. She was one of the top software uh, engineers at uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. A former top uh, Army Corps engineer, software engineer told me that my code wasn't great. I never liked programming. But in this aspect, as far as somebody learning or a kid, who could be interested in learning programming, the basics of programming could do a lot for them because, you know, the, the, the bots, it was just programming, like CNC machines or things like that. I could see how if you wanted to introduce programming to a kid, this would be a great thing for the kid to play. It's very fun. Um, this would be a great game for a, a kid trying to learn something uh, about programming and, you know, just it would be a fun game on steam this game got a 9 out of 10 the cost is $19.99 and i'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5 i think it's a pretty good game let's go ahead and tally all these games up and see if we got a good deal peaky blinders mastermind $24.99 project cars $19.99 rec center tycoon $11.99 close to the sun $19.99 chris sawyer's locomotion $5.99 roller coaster tycoon deluxe $5.99, Talisman Origins, $6.99, Table Manners, $17.99, and Autonauts, $19.99, which gives us a total of $133.91. That's a fantastic deal for a $4.99 bundle. Uh, the only game I wouldn't play again is Close to the Sun. I'm just not into horror games, but all the rest of them, I can see myself playing again. Definitely Talisman Origins. That definitely will be a game I put in my rotation. Guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.